Hi, I'm Brett with WIPdeveloper.com. Last time, we learned about getting data with using the wire service so that we could get information from Salesforce without having to write any server-side code or Apex. This time, we're going to take a look at retrieving data from uh, Salesforce by calling an Apex class and having it return the data in a format that we want. To start with, I have duplicated the component that we had at the end of getting, using the wire service. And it looks the same because it's exactly the same right now. And we will start by changing the only uh, HTML change between the two. We are going to change using wire service to using Apex. And we'll save that, deploy it, make sure that we do have two different components on the page. Now it looks like it's done, so there we go. The bottom one is using Apex, or it will be. So we don't need to make any other changes uh, with the HTML, so we'll close that out. Before we get started with the JavaScript file, let's take a look at the class we're going to use. We're going to use a class I called First Component Controller. It declares... Uh, it declares one static method called init, and it has decorated with the or enabled, and is using cacheable equals true. It's going to return uh, this map that is a string and object, and we query for the user ID that's provided, or we query for the user ID that we get from uh, user info dot get user ID, and if we do find the user, we add that to the return object as the user. And then we set the success to true, and we return the user object. So that's all the Apex. It's pretty simple. You probably need more than this in your own code. Now, to access that in a Lightning Web component, we are going to get rid of get record. because we aren't going to use that. What we will use is we use um, we will import init actually from Salesforce Apex first component init. Uh, I've just there you saw me using the autocomplete for uh, that is part of the Visual Studio Code plugins. So I didn't have to type the whole thing out. It did some of the work for me. And we used init instead of the get record handler. And we don't need, we're going to actually get rid of all that. We'll pass that into our wire handler, and then we'll have that decorate the a method. We're going to call it handle init. And we'll have it deconstruct the results so that we can get the error. Oops. And the data. Oops. Did not need to type out the data. And in this function, we will just well, what do we want to do? I like to add a little. Uh, since we're playing around with it, I'm going to add a window console log here. So when we're looking at it in the debug statements, we can know what is um, where it was. And I'm going to pass in the error and the data so that those are logged out. Now, what first thing we should do is actually check to see if there is an error. So we'll use if error, which with JavaScript is if that object exists, it'll behave, uh, it'll act like it's tr a true statement and go into this section of code. And we're going to just log it to the console. And 
and it would help if I could spell. And then we will, uh, we're gonna do an else if. Else if there's data, we're gonna set the data on, oh, we don't have a user yet. We can get rid of the user ID, but we're gonna, this dot user equals data dot user. And what do we do if that's not right? Let's just add a little final statement. Just to let us know that we got to the wrong part of the code. So what did I do here? Else is spelled wrong. There we go. So now when the wire service calls in it in our Apex code, the handler is going to log the error message and the data object at the start of the method. And then we'll check if there's an error message, because most likely this will end up as a null in the console. But it'll log something went wrong to the uh, browser console window. If nothing goes wrong and there is data, we set the data.user onto the this class. Let's get rid of the user ID right now. We set the user in this class so that we can access it in the template. And then we, if there's no error and there's no data, start to wonder what's going on. Uh, just most likely that will never happen. Um, one thing that's different is we don't actually need all these checks. What we want to do, because we don't have uh, user.data.fields.name.value to go down. What we want to do is just check here. We got, uh, so what we're doing here is we're checking to see if, does this user exist? If it does, we return the user.name. Otherwise, we return an empty string. And we do that so that um, we're just checking this so we don't accidentally try calling for the name when the, before the user is populated because that could throw errors and it would just be easier if we don't do that. And now let's see if we have it in uh, deploy this to Salesforce. See if we get a name. Does not look like we have a name. What did we do wrong? Um, oh, let's go to our I think we need to track this. So we'll add a tracking decorator on the user, and that means we have to import it. So we import it from LWC, and we decorate the user, and we'll deploy this. Our label has no value. Let's see if this loads first. There we go, our, we have our user's name. We don't have the rest of the values because right now we are still checking for the user data fields on all the others. Uh, but before we get that far, let's add a value here. So let's make sure this gets deployed and see if we have a name on the field there. It 
why. Did I? Hmm. Oh, right. That's not where we're setting it. We could probably get rid of that, but let's just leave it for now. We are setting it down here, but I'm going to copy and paste the return statement from the name so that it's no, we just have to just copy and paste it over and over versus typing it out every time. And right now, that means all of them would be name, but we don't want that. Change the email one, <coughs> if I could spell correctly, to email. And the company name to you guessed it, company name. And don't hold out for the suspense, but phone is going to return the user phone. Let's deploy this. Go back to our page and refresh it. There you go. We have our company name at the top. We have the username, the fake phone number. WIPdeveloper.com is the company name again and the email address of the user. So we're returning the same values from our Apex controller as we and seeing them on the screen um, using the same template except for updating the label as we used for the wire service. So that's pretty slick. Of course, we aren't using built in functionality for from Salesforce anymore. So we will have to be responsible for maintaining any changes that we, um, with how that logic is handled. That's all for now. Remember to sign up for the weekly standup, and you can get updated with any new information we have on wipdeveloper.com.